What's going on, everybody? RJ Ochoa here from SB Nations, blogging the boys.com. Hope all is well wherever you are. We hope you're happy, safe, healthy, and I know there is no live show today. Wednesday, August 10th, 2022. Had a bit of a scheduling conflict, but wanted to make sure that we had something here. We promise something every single day. Whether it's live or recorded, we make sure that we cover the latest and greatest in the world of the Dallas Cowboys. But Wednesday was kind of a boring day for the Cowboys. Had a walkthrough and getting ready to head to Denver for joint practices with the Denver Broncos. We'll, of course, have you covered here on on the channel please subscribe to the blog of the boys youtube channel uh we'll have a live show on thursday so we have you know some stuff to kind of react to but for now gonna kind of look forward gonna gonna hopscotch or maybe not hopscotch what's the word i'm thinking of uh what's the one when you jump over something leapfrog gonna leapfrog the practice uh with the broncos uh and get to the game on saturday night the cowboys of course visiting the denver broncos saturday night in denver that's what the word visiting means uh we will have a live show live post game reaction as we always do after every single dallas cowboys game here on the channel but one thing i want to talk about before we get there a few days away uh, is who needs to show up specifically five Dallas Cowboys who need to have an impressive game on Saturday against to be clear I don't think anybody can really lose their roster spot they can certainly do a lot to lose it um, but but there are some players who are Maybe not on the outs. Not all these players are in the same position, right? There are some guys who are maybe on the edge, on the line of maybe not making the final 53-man roster. And then there's players we just need to see more from. Their, their spot is secure. They're going to be on this team. But we, we really need to see more to be able to trust in the event of an injury or, or whatever reason the depth has to be utilized. And so five players going to get to just roll through them, rip through them. Let's go ahead and start, and we'll get the obvious out of the way. Um, technically cheating here. This is Lareem Hyrulahu and Brett Maher. we got to figure this this out we got to see it i know we've talked a lot about kickers and there's a lot of you like how are we still talking about the kicking situation i'm with you i don't know how we can still be in this situation at this point in time yet here we are we find ourselves it is an act of pure and total amazement but got to see something i've said before it's denver it's high altitude so take it with a little bit of a grain of salt but we've got to see some accuracy from these kickers i don't care how they fare in kickoffs for what it's worth the dallas morning news reported late tuesday night that matt amendola who was one of the four tryouts actually had a more accurate tryout than brett maher he made one more field goal uh, he went 12 of 15 according to the dmn uh, but the cowboys chose brett maher because of what he demonstrated on kickoffs we do not care about kickoffs we do not care about kickoffs we want to see accuracy when it comes to the kicking game we want to see balls through the uprights and i don't care who it is if it's lareem hyrulahu if it's brett maher when saturday night is over we need to see something from a kicker that makes us feel comfortable that if it comes down to this like it did several times last season we don't have to sweat it out so that's number one although it's technically one and two but it only counts as one uh the actual number two uh is somebody who is literally number one kelvin joseph i mean this is one of those, like, you know, when you talk about Lareem or Brett, right, like one of them is not going to be on this roster. Maybe both aren't. But Kelvin Joseph's going to be on, on the Cowboys roster. No, nobody is disputing that or denying that. Um, he's a, a second-round pick entering his second season. But I will say that again, he is a second-round pick entering his second season. So far, he is, and we talked about this in the BTB Roundtable on Tuesday night, he has had the least amount of shine of any of the cornerbacks. We have seen moments of pop from, obviously, Trayvon Diggs, Anthony Brown, Jordan Lewis, and Sean Wright. Even Deron Bland has gotten in the mix and had some nice moments. We have not seen anything from Kelvin Joseph as of yet. The biggest moment that Kelvin Joseph has been affiliated with so far throughout camp came very early on when TJ Vasher mossed him. And, and, you know, that was one moment, so you shouldn't blow it out of proportion or anything like that but we have seen nothing from kelvin joseph he had an opportunity on tuesday when trayvon Diggs was in practicing to run with the ones and still didn't really see much and so we'll see how much he plays i think that that will also be an interesting kind of you know tea leaf to read is, is what what the you know to kind of show what the cowboys think of him what dan quinn wants to see what mike mccarthy wants to see but kelvin joseph has to show up we have to see something legitimate it, it's got to happen now it, it cannot be waiting much longer you were a second round pick two years not even two years ago last year you have to start showing some potential what the Cowboys saw, which is why they spent their second round pick on you. Speaking of second round picks, our third player is a former second round pick entering the final year of his rookie contract, and that's Tristan Hill. On Tuesday, um, the Fort Worth Star Telegram's Clarence Hill Jr. kind of pontificated or speculated, however you want to look at it, that the Cowboys could be looking to trade Tristan Hill. And maybe you fall in the camp that wants to do that. Maybe you're ready to move on from Tristan Hill. He is in the final year of his rookie contract. If we forecast to the offseason, 
offseason after the Cowboys have won the Super Bowl, obviously. Um, I think it's unlikely that they're going to re-sign Tristan Hill. They have a lot of bodies at defensive tackle. You're talking about Neville Gallimore, Oso Digizua, Quentin Bohana, John Ridgeway now, Carlos Watkins. I know he's you know, on a one-year deal, but still, uh, the Cowboys also work in Chauncey Golston at defensive tackle. So, I mean, we've listed a lot of names. Um, and, and Tristan Hill is, is really, you know, we've said it several times, he's not somebody who this coaching staff was, was a part of in terms of bringing him in back in 2019. And so I don't know. I'm, I'm very fascinated to see how they handle this if they're unable to trade him. And I don't know that there's a huge market for Tristan Hill, to be fair. But would they cut him? Do they feel like that's fair? Do they feel like that's appropriate? Would they rather just kind of prioritize other players, other draft picks? Would they have more uh, roster control over for, for a longer length of time, unlike Tristan Hill, who again is in the final year of his rookie contract? I don't know. But I think if, if you're a believer, if you're somebody who wants to see Tristan Hill traded, then hell yeah, you want to see a good preseason performance from him. Go out, Tristan Hill, get 100 sacks. Do something to really maximize that trade value. Um, but if not, do something to, to to make the Cowboys feel like they cannot move on from you, even though it's the final year of your rookie contract, even though this staff wasn't the crew who oversaw your drafting. Do something to prove that you need to stick around. I think Tristan Hill, uh, maybe not in the same way that Kelvin Joseph needs to, but definitely has to have a big game on Saturday night. Next up, this one's kind of vague. I know I kind of cheated with the first one in, in using two players. I'm actually not using two players here. I'm actually using a lot of players. Uh, whichever receiver wants a spot is the super technical way that I have listed this. And let's see. Let's just kind of let's let's do the math. And and we're doing the math of um, wide receivers that are going to make the initial Dallas Cowboys 53-man roster. And by initial, I mean the Cowboys are going to have to carry Michael Gallup and James Washington, right? And then they'll apply whatever injury designations they want to, but they're going to have to carry them initially. So we've got CeeDee Lamb, Michael Gallup, James Washington, Jalen Tolbert, right? So there's four. Noah Brown's making this roster, right? There's no question about that. So we're at a safe, easy five. Simi Fajoko is making this roster. I think I know a lot of us were kind of, you know, ready to, to start thinking about moving on. But Simi Fajoko has had an amazing training camp. We've been talking about that a lot. So now we're at six. Are you a TJ Vasher fan? Are you a Dennis Houston fan? I mean, now we've got eight names to kind of consider here. And, and, and so maybe of those eight names, maybe the Dennis Houston and TJ Vashers of the world don't make the initial 53-man roster. And after the injury designations that are applied to Gallup and Washington happen, maybe they come back. Maybe it's some sort of situation like that. I didn't even mention Cavante Turpin, by the way. He, that's nine if you want to take it up to that. I mean, so it, it's tough. And so we, we really... I do think that the locks, if we categorize them that way, the locks, counting the injured players, are CeeDee Lamb, Michael Gallup, James Washington, Jalen Tolbert, Noah Brown, and Cavante Turbin. Those are the locks. That's six. Semi Fajoko, I think, is right there on, on the precipice of being a lock. That would be seven. Um, and I think Dennis Houston obviously has a great relationship with Dak Prescott, or, or at least has the trust of Dak Prescott. Maybe that earns him a, sp a spot on the practice squad. Um, but that's the thing. TJ Vasher, I mentioned the mossing moment over Kelvin Joseph. We haven't really seen anything since then. Then this is if, if the race is down to Dennis Houston and TJ Vasher, somebody needs to separate themselves. Somebody needs to prove why they need to be here over the other. It's a competition. And so, you know, I'm rooting for both of them. I'm rooting for all of them. I want to see something special from all these wide receivers. I would love to see Cavante Turpin utilized in some fun way throughout the preseason, but his roster spot is very safe. It's not like he's in jeopardy. So we need to see whichever wide receiver wants a spot, whether that spot winds up being on the 53 man roster at some point or on the practice squad, um, it's important. So, last one. I know I've cheated. I know we're not technically anymore at a place of five names, but uh, it doesn't matter. I made up the games. I made up the rules. Last one, Cooper Rush. Um, and I don't know what's going to happen with Will Greer. Had a little bit of a, of a injury kind of scare moment touch thing. Mike McCarthy said they would evaluate him, kind of monitor the situation. But throughout camp so far, Will Greer has, has definitely challenged Cooper Rush for the QB2 spot with the Dallas Cowboys. And so, I don't, you know, I came into this and I think a lot of people did thinking that Cooper's job was safe just because it's kind of the Cowboys thing to say, well, he started the game for us last year. He won the game. Why, why, you know, why mess with a good thing? But if Cooper doesn't play well in the preseason, I could definitely see them moving on. I, I think that, I don't know that I think Will Greer can win this job, but I definitely think that Cooper Rush can lose this job, if that makes sense. I think if Cooper goes out and doesn't, I think he just has to play moderately well. I don't think Cooper has to come out and play overly well to earn his spot backing up Dak Prescott, but if he comes out and is flat, if he comes out and is obviously not good, I think that can go a long ways uh, towards deterring the Cowboys from keeping him around for another season. So Cooper Rush, do something special. But those are the five Dallas Cowboys who need to have 
an impressive game on Saturday against the Denver Broncos. Obviously, uh, the practice against the Broncos uh, is going to be important and, and a part of the evaluation and whatnot. And so we got to consider that too. Uh, but we'll see, obviously, more starters involved in that, um, you know, that time than, than throughout uh, the game on Saturday night. So, yeah, my name is RJ Ochoa. You can follow me on Twitter or Instagram at RJ Ochoa on TikTok at rj.ochoa. You can send me an email if you would like to, rj.ochoa at sbnation.com, or you can always leave me a comment down below, and we'll get to those also. Uh, Thursday, got a live show coming your way sometime in the afternoon, probably about 3 p.m. Central time-ish, uh, as soon as things wrap up, of course, with the Cowboys. But for now, thanks for hanging out. I hope you have a great day. I hope you have um, I hope you have the best day ever. I hope you have something good to eat. I hope you watch something great on television, and I hope whatever team you're rooting for, um, wins, especially if that team uh, had to beat the Dallas Cowboys um, on Saturday night. So uh, thanks for hanging out, everybody. We'll see you next time, and uh, love you all.